Welcome to Ultimate Guitars NAM coverage. We are here in the Ernie Ball Castle of Shred, I think we're calling it. It's a good uh, name. This glorious room that they've set up for us, and we're here with uh, Mr. Fluff. Uh, How's it going, internets? <laughs> so, are you familiar with Ultimate Guitar? Oh, did dude. Did you learn by tabs? Of course. Okay. Of course, I was going on Ultimate Guitar for tabs. Oh man, I don't know how long you guys have been around, but I would say easily 15 years ago. Okay. Like early, early website, the whole deal when it was just, just piles and piles and piles that you had to wade through. Like mm -hmm. it was a great resource that like you could go there because someone was, would surely be putting tabs there more so than anywhere else. Yeah. So it was, it was a great time. Well, as long as we're in the time machine, what was your first guitar and what were some of the first songs that you tried to learn? First series guitar was honestly a 94 Fender Strat. And it was, I, I got the Strat for my 15th birthday and I was a grunge kid growing up in Seattle, started in the summer of 94. And some of the first songs I was playing was probably Smashing Pumpkins Quiet. Um, any Nirvana song and anything from the Alice in Chains Dirt record is the what I was always trying to like model my playing after. You know, I thought of Them Bones riff I just thought was like the greatest thing I'd ever heard in my life. It was, it was awesome. And when did you start writing original tunes? Honestly, I remember trying to write original tunes in like some of my first punk bands in like 1997. Really, I mean, honestly, in the earliest of days, like you basically take known riffs of big actual albums and like tweak them a little bit because no one's gonna know like <laughs> you know like them bones riff you know descending instead of ascending like that's totally different it's not or a different rhythm it's not it's this it's the same thing but you know that's that's where we all start right like we're just trying to learn the basic building blocks of of a song yeah. i guess as it were so as long as uh we were on the subject of your first guitar. Was that the one that was all covered in stickers that you recently uh, <laughs> resurrected? That that is that is the one. That's the one. Um, my dad still still asked me if it's still covered in stickers because the, the the funny part of that is I was never allowed. I was not allowed to put stickers on it. It was just a basic black and white strat. Sure. And then I put one on it, and then I would go a month. And if my dad didn't say anything, I would put another one. on it. <laughs> and, then, and then one day he was like, wait, why did you put all the stickers on that? Get those off there. And then like, he was just like, whatever, you're just going to do what you're going to do. But like, he can't believe I still have that thing. Yeah. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. I love that episode on uh, on your YouTube channel. If you haven't visited my like, YouTube channel, check it out. It's amazing. Stuff. Come hang out. Come on. Hit that subscribe button. Ooh, thank you. Also, yes, do that. Listen to him. Yeah. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah, we have a YouTube channel too. So yes. that one. Uh, is there a song that you're most proud of creating in your mm, I would say uh, the Drag Dunder song, Hypochondria, was a real high point, and that kind of opened the floodgates for us as a band. And that was the song that got everyone going, wait, what is this? Like, wait, what, what? Like, that was that really gave us an early boost um, and a lot, of, uh, a lot of traction, just because it's a great song. And... Uh, I co I didn't I didn't write the whole thing. I can't take full credit for for any of it. Um, it was a collaborative effort, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm really proud of that song. Yeah, yeah, it's a good song. Uh, you're holding a very beautiful guitar, which you thank you proud of as well. I love that color. Thank you. Um, tell me how this came about. When did you kind of start working with Ernie Ball, and how did you come to the folks at Ernie Ball to make? Because you've had your hands on so many different models, so many different brands. I have. What uh, what made you settle on uh, Ernie Ball? Music Man growing up, so uh, my first exposure to Music Man guitars, not basses, was I think everyone else's was, uh, you know, through Eddie Van Halen. Uh, specifically, the Guitar World uh, yellow cover of him when he debuted his like short hair in the 90s or whatever it was with the Balance record. Um, I always took like only real serious musicians played Music Man. They didn't have any, I'm not going to say like not serious players, That's that's a weird description, but like you only saw Music Man in the hands of guys like Steve Morris and Albert Lee and and later, you know, John Petrucci, but like, you know, Eddie Van Halen. That was always like such a high level mark in my eyes growing up. Um, I initially was on, I've been on Ernie Ball strings since I was 
you know, 14 years old. Um, played some other strings over the years just for different tunings and things like that. But then um, I've been on Ernie Ball strings, I think, for 12, 13 years now. And that was kind of a natural progression when Dragon Under started is I needed some tour guitars with some specific features. Um, and I got a chance to make some initial tour guitars. And those were one-off guitars, which are basically what are the two, you know, my signature guitars. Um, these were just one-offs of like, hey, you know, it'd be kind of cool is, uh, you know, a humbucker in this color and, you know, Tilly Dan or a sparkle or whatever. And uh, they built them. And I went all over the world with those guitars and it kind of just progressed from there. I basically got a call from Tim one day and he said, we're really tired of hearing about people asking about your guitar. Like, you just, when you want to do like a, like a kind of a release or something, I was like, what? So that's, it was just kind of a natural progression, man. Honestly, they were just really road worthy. I have uh, sweated and poured water on them, not intentionally. And I uh, left them out in the snow accidentally. And uh, yeah, they just were awesome. So dependable. Yeah, crazy stuff happens on the road. Dude. Do you have any uh, tour stories that you're able to share with us legally? Um, okay, so our, 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 our first guitarist, Josh, shout out to Josh. He just got married. I was just at his wedding. Um, it was really, really late on. We were out. Our first really big tours with the used. They took us out. We were the only support band. It was an incredible tour. And the drive schedule was a little nuts. And Josh was driving. I was in the passenger seat and passengers supposed to stay awake. And I was kind of dozing off. And I didn't notice that after a gas stop, again, he, this is like three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. And we've already been driving like 10 hours. I didn't notice that he went on to an off ramp uh, uh, in the middle of the Midwest. So he starts going up and I, I'm kind of dozing off. I'm still awake. And I see what are clearly two semi headlights coming at us. And then there's another semi behind it. And I perk up and I scream and I tell Josh, stop, turn around now. And I, and he not jackknifes it, but he, he doesn't turn sharp enough soon enough. So then I have to get out and back up the trailer in a very, very fast fashion to get out of the way of the semi. You got to travel safe. And we were awake after that. Yes. It was awesome. <laughs> Better than coffee. It was. Your depth was. experiences. Yes, it was. Your coffee. It was wild. <laughs> so what does 2024 have in store for you? What, what are you up to? I'm not touring anymore. I'm trying to, I'm trying to dive into the audio nerd world. Um, I'm mixing a lot of records, producing bands, and still doing the YouTube thing, uh, working with bands, songs. I don't know, I kind of want to do a bigger breadth of things creatively. Uh, mainly the things that I never had time to because I was gone on tour for, you know, six years of my life. Um, so I'm just trying to take advantage of all the things that I can now that I'm home. And and also be home and not eating out of a gas station at 4 o'clock in the morning for dinner. I don't, I don't miss that. Yeah. Has there been any thought about a solo record or... Uh, uh, something like that, putting out some more original music. Uh, people have asked me about a solo record, a, a non-touring, just 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 putting out records. That's absolutely a possibility. Um, I have thought about doing a, uh, and this is not a totally original idea, but like having a bunch of my friends like do things, whether they're a drummer, bassist, singer, or whatever, kind of doing um, just a big collaborative record for fun. That is really appealing. And there's absolutely a possibility I do that either in, either this year or next year. But uh, yeah, a studio only thing is always a possibility. All right. Yeah, yeah for sure. Is there anything specific? Any uh, bands that you're producing? You're excited to produce? Uh, um, on the horizon. I have been. I haven't been producing. I am in the middle of mixing uh, some new songs from a band called Letter Kills, that are awesome. Letter Kills did like the civic tour they they toured a bunch with like my chemical romance back in the day and like they were like really came up but like it's like you know mid-2000s emo but like the best of so good um i did some winter haven stuff um i don't know i get to work on it with some really cool bands uh resider from san diego i'm in the middle of doing their stuff right now um yeah really cool like big big rock stuff yeah yeah and I suppose pulling back is going to give you more time to focus on the YouTube stuff. Uh, yeah. You have some fun stuff in the works. Some I do. Projects. I do. 
can't talk publicly about that stuff, but um, I am able to go and kind of do some larger, larger picture stuff. Not, st you know, stuff, stuff in my house is fine, but like traveling and going and doing stuff uh, abroad is always fun or, um, you know, I'm starting a podcast and it's going to be awesome. I can't say anything about it yet, but um, I'm working on a podcast with uh, Drake Dunder bassist Hans and that's going to be a lot of fun as well. So wonderful. Lots of stuff. Well, speaking to as someone who uh, kind of grew up on Ultimate Guitar, if that's fair to say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and now you're you've made a career of it. You do yes. excellent things. Um, do you have any advice to that kid who just got his first guitar? He's on Ultimate Guitar looking up tabs. <laughs> yes, I do. Don't completely believe the first tab that you come into. Take a if there's like 70 different versions of the same song really use your ear to see which one is actually accurate and the star system is actually very useful that wasn't a thing before right. and you just had to go version one through 50 but now you let the community rate the accuracy which is such a time saver yeah. so yeah use the star system please <laughs> well thank you so much for all that you hey. put out into the world uh, as far as great content Thanks, on man. youtube subscribe to this youtube channel um and uh, thank you for being part of our Dude, community. Man. Thank you so much for hanging. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. See ya.